Hello, everyone. In this session, we will discuss the hash view feature in Cortex XDR. Here in this how to video, we will discuss how to access the hash view in the console, components of the hash view, and additional actions that can be taken from the hash view. The hash view allows us to view detailed information related to file and process SHA 256 hashes in our environment, including actions on the file and process executions on the hash. We can also perform certain actions such as adding the hash to a block or allow list directly from the hash view. The hash view can be accessed in two primary ways within the XDR console. First, from the quick launch bar, we can paste a hash, search, and open the hash view. Secondly, from any table within XDR, we can right click on a SHA-256 hash and select open hash view. Additionally, from an incident, we can go to key assets and artifacts, select the three dots menu beside an artifact and click open hash view. In this case, we're investigating a hash that was part of a suspected ransomware event. Please note that only SHA-256 hashes can be used in the hash view. MD5 hashes will not have the option to open the hash view. Also, since the hash view is populated in real time, it may take a while to fully load. The search results status will be displayed in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, indicating when the search is complete. There are three key areas of the hash view. First, in the middle, is a data display showing actions related to the hash. Second, the controls for this display are shown at the top of the page, including the event type to display, the primary and secondary node types, the number of nodes to show, and the time frame. The third is on the right-hand side and shows information about the hash, including search data in natural language, threat intelligence data from wildfire and, if configured, virus total, IOC information if this is on our IOC list, block or allow status if on the global block or allow list, and related open incidents. The default view shows process executions of the hash grouped by the initiating process and broken down by the host over the past seven days. We also have the option to display process injections as well as file operations like read or write. Through the controls at the top of the page, we can also pivot our view to show by user show additional nodes and or limit the search to the past 24 hours. In this view, we can also gather some additional data related to the hash and perform policy actions. At the bottom of the page, we have a file search tab and a recent process ex executions tab. <clears throat> the file search tab allows us to search our environment for the file hash by clicking on search. This will create an action and execute it on all of our endpoints. The recent process executions tab shows us recent executions of the hash with additional information, such as the process and parent process hash. We also have a link to open this as an XQL query. Finally, the actions button in the upper right hand corner can allow us to add the hash to a let allow list or a block list and also create and manage IOCs. In this case, we will add it to our global block list and also create an IOC. In this case, we will mark it as bad and completely reliable as we observed it within our environment. We now see the hash view has been updated to include an IOC section and an indication that this is on the block list. To summarize, in this video, we access the hash view in two ways, using the quick launcher and via tables in the XDR interface. We saw what information is presented in the hash view, options for changing the data and pivoting, additional search options, and actions that can be taken from the hash view. The hash view presents data about specific file executions, 
and also file actions by hash, which can be used to quickly analyze prevalent or rare file executions and read write operations in the environment, and can also allow us to take action based on that analysis. Thank you for watching.